Hi there, RC Girl here. Today we have a Spectrum NX6 flight transmitter from Horizon Hobby. This is from Spectrum's new NX line of transmitters that's largely gonna be replacing the DX line. I've been using the DX6 for about two years now as they've been learning to fly, and the NX6 has some pretty cool new upgrades and new features. For starters, it's Wi-Fi enabled, so you don't have to plug it in anymore to get those updates. Also smart ready, so if you're running smart batteries, ESCs, and receivers, you're gonna get your telemetry already integrated. And huge bonus, it has pre-programmed model templates for all of the Horizon planes. Is it worth upgrading your transmitter? In this video, we're gonna explore all the new features, talk about the differences between the NX6 and the DX6, also transfer over all my models from the DX6 and see what it takes to transfer those over to the new NX model. Then we're gonna try programming a new plane from one of their model templates. Stay tuned. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here you're gonna find RC reviews, tips and tricks, run videos, flight videos, and other things related to RC. So make sure you guys like and subscribe. Also head over to my Instagram and Facebook. I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And I also opened up a new Patreon page. So welcome to the new patrons and thank you so much for subscribing. I'll also put a link to the new NX line of transmitters in the description box below if you wanna check them all out. Okay, let's dive on in. This is everything that comes in the box. Of course, you have your transmitter. We'll go over that in more detail in a second. You're gonna get your instructions pack. You can also download this on Spectrum and Horizon Hobbies website. And goes over everything you need to know about the NX6. If you got the one that comes with the receiver, this is the AR6610T. You're gonna have all your servo ports here, your diversity antennas, and then all your ports for telemetry. I believe this is the telemetry sensor for sensing voltage. We got our instructions for the receiver. They also make a version of the transmitter without the receiver. It's a little bit cheaper. It also comes with a little sheet here that encourages you to set up the Wi-Fi functionality so that you can register your model and also update to the latest firmware. We also have our USB to micro USB cable. That's gonna plug into the back of your transmitter here for charging it and also for plugging it into your computer if you're using it with the simulator. It comes with a lithium ion rechargeable battery. This is a 2000 milliamp. So you're just gonna be able to plug in your transmitter into the wall and it's gonna recharge this battery for you. The other one I had to get like uh, rechargeable batteries, like double A's and this one, it already has a rechargeable battery in there for you included. Lastly, it comes with a little Allen wrench and that is to take off your little gimbals if you want. Before we go into the, some of the programming stuff, let's take a look at the external features. So you'll notice here that there's a folding antenna, really cool. You can use this for storing it and transporting it. It's gonna be a lot safer. Also really great for more compact storage. Something new in this as well is that it has diversity antennas. So you're gonna have one antenna here and then one antenna in the transmitter itself. That's gonna give you better flight signal. I also could not find the on button when I first opened this. I was like, where is the on button? In the DX6, it's right here. It's just a little slide knob. On this one, it's actually the logo for Spectrum here. It's lighted, so you could turn it on. Makes a cool little noise. Here you can see the two models side by side. We have the new NX6 here and the DX6. The switch layout is gonna be very, very similar, but there are a couple of the external features that have been upgraded on this one. The first thing you'll probably notice is the color screen in the NX6. Really cool upgrade. You can change so many different facets of the palette, the color palette. It has some presets in there, but you can also customize pretty much every single color with RGB settings. I'll show you how to do some of the color changing settings in a bit. Another thing I noticed about the NX6 is that it's considerably lighter than the DX6. That's probably because it comes with the lithium ion battery versus having to have the four rechargeable batteries. So that's gonna drop some of the weight. Other than the difference in weight, the grip feels pretty similar between the two. Another thing you'll notice is that the NX6 has a micro SD port, whereas the DX6 has the larger one. Just FYI, if you're gonna be using the SD card features and functions, you're gonna want something that's 62 gigabytes or lower and also class six or lower. Another upgrade from the NX6 from the DX6 is that if you're using the safe models, safe select or S plus models, you're not gonna be using up a spare channel anymore. So for example, with my previous planes, if I wanted to use the safe functions on my planes, that would be taking up a channel, one of your six channels. 
In this case with the NX6, you can use a seventh channel just to program your safe function in the planes. It's not gonna be taking up a spare channel. The scroll wheel is also much upgraded. So I don't know if you guys had a DX6, my scroll wheel was super touchy. It would kind of like spaz out. So of course it's not doing it right now, but it would ju basically just keep scrolling when I wasn't even touching the scroll wheel. This one has been upgraded and I don't get any more of that skipping. Really, really, really nice. I kind of hated that about the DX6. The gimbals feel very similar between the two. I believe in some of the higher channel NX models, they actually have hall gimbals, which are upgraded gimbals, but these feel the same to me. I can't really tell the difference. If anything, these feel a little bit more firm because they haven't been used. Our trim buttons are a little bit lower profile on the NX versus the DX. You can see here. Otherwise, let's dive on into some of the programming settings. Next, I'm gonna show you guys how I transferred over my models from the DX6 to the new NX6. So say you got a new transmitter and you wanna keep all your models from your previous transmitter, but you wanna import those into your NX6. You're gonna need your micro SD card with your large SD card adapter, because as I mentioned, this takes the big SD card, this takes the micro SD. So you're gonna put that into your transmitter, the one that you wanna grab your models from. You're gonna go into system setup. Make sure you don't have any planes attached because it's gonna turn off your radio frequency. Then you're gonna go to the bottom and you're gonna go to transfer SD card. So it says insert, but I already inserted it. So select option. You can either export a single model or you can export all your models. It's gonna overwrite anything you have on the SD card. So make sure there's nothing else on there that you want. And then you go to export. Transferring. I think I have like 20 or so models in here. I probably should have just done a couple of them because some of them are like junk models or trainer models. Okay, we're ready to go. So we're gonna take our SD card out, put that in to our new NX6. Then we're gonna go into the functions list. Again, go all the way to system setup. Then we're gonna go to the bottom, transfer SD card. Then we're gonna go to model import. There's a couple, you can also import palettes and all that, you can download palettes and stuff too, kinda cool. So we'll go to model import, export, select option. You can import a single model and select from among the list. So these are all the models that it saved on the SD card or you can import all of them. So we're gonna do all, and that's pretty much it. Then you go to import. It's gonna take a little while to transfer over all the models. Okay, so when it's finished, it's gonna pull up the screen and it's gonna show you how many models it imported. I had about 20 models, so this looks correct. But we're gonna go back to the home screen. And if you wanna select a model, you can just hold down these two buttons, same as the DX6. It'll take you to the model select screen. And here it shows all my models. Super cool. If you had any models already programmed in here, it's gonna put the transfer models below that. Next, I'm gonna show you guys how to select from among their bind and fly presets. So if you have any of the Horizon bind and fly models, they have preset templates in there to pull from. So super easy, I'll show you guys how to do that. So go as if you're gonna select a model. You can hold down these two buttons again. Then we're gonna go to the bottom add new model. Here you see the model type, so you can select different plane types. And you can also select templates, so you can pre-save if you have certain switches that you like to set your flaps to all the time, you can set model templates, or you can select from among their bind and fly models. So we'll select that. We're gonna go to create. And here it's gonna pull up all of the preset models. Let's try to set up my Valiant with their bind and fly presets. So we're gonna select the Valiant BNF SPM file. Model will be appended to the end of the model list. We go to import. Okay, so here we have eFlight Valiant 1.3 bind and fly. Then you go into bind your model and it's gonna pull in all those presets for you. So let's go to our monitor and here we have our flaps preset in and also your safe select. 
One thing I would suggest and definitely recommend, double check all the settings. Don't assume that something's set up perfectly before you fly. I like to go in and set my switches for like example, my throttle kill. I like to always set it to that. So I'm gonna have to change where the safe select sets up. Next, let's go in and show you guys how to change some of the palette settings. If you wanna change your colors and really customize your transmitter, I think that's really, really cool. So we're gonna go into system setup. Make sure you don't have a plane connected, of course. And then you're gonna go down da -da -da, to palette utilities. New model, so any new model, for example, what we just did with the E-Flight Valiant is gonna be assigned the Spectrum, which is just the standard template that they have that you can see here. So this model, you can toggle through all of these presets. So this is the Hi-Vis Good at Night. It's gonna have the black background, red, white, and blue, red, black, and gold, black and white, Spectrum Dark. I kind of like the Spectrum Dark, actually. That's what I had when I first showed you guys this transmitter. You can do orange. Orange is not my favorite color, to be honest. Personalized. So if you wanna go in and get crazy with all the RGBs, select personalized. And this is where I'm gonna refer you guys to the Spectrum video. I'll put a link up here if you wanna personalize it. So you can go into the palette editor, lots of different color options. When you first power this up, it's gonna ask you to connect to your Wi-Fi. So I connected to my network. You can select your network. You're gonna to have to input your password and all that. Then go to connect, connected. Okay, we're gonna to go to continue. It's gonna ask you to log into your Spectrum account. If this is your first time, you're gonna to need to make a username and password. If it's not your first time, then you're gonna to have to put in your username and password. Sweet. So we're gonna to go to register and then we're gonna check for updates. So instead of having to use your SD card like you did on the DX6, which you still can do on this, but you're gonna be able to download updates from here via Wi-Fi. When it's finished, it's gonna say download complete. Then we're gonna install it. This is gonna take a couple minutes, just don't turn it off when it's trying to update. Some accessories that I would recommend, definitely need a nerd lanyard to connect that to your transmitter when you're flying. And also a nice carry case. I've had this one for my DX6, kind of like it, pretty simple. Um, I'll put a link to these on Amazon. I don't know if the same one's available. Unfortunately, my gimbal protectors, I got these on eBay, I think, 3D printed. These no longer fit because the gimbals are a little bit different. Just protects your gimbals from getting bumped. They don't fit as well as they did on the DX6. I might have to get some new ones. But yeah, carry case, nerd lanyard, and gimbal protectors, and you should be good to go. So what do I think of the new NX6? Is your DX6 transmitter obsolete? Definitely not. It has a lot of the same functionalities. This has just been modernized quite a bit. Really like the Wi-Fi. That's kind of a necessary thing these days. You can download all your updates via Wi-Fi, color screen, really, really cool. Lots of customization there. One of my favorite things is that it has pre-programmed templates in there for you. You can save your own templates and also save functions on your planes. Do not take up a spare channel anymore. The fact that it is smart ready, telemetry capable. I know I didn't show you guys, but you don't have to use the dongle anymore. You don't need a separate dongle. If you wanna use this with the real flight simulator, you just plug in your cable, the USB cable, USB-C into the back and then you are good to go. If you guys still have more questions, shoot me a comment below. If you have one of these, let me know how you're enjoying it. This would be a great transmitter for someone wanting to grow in the hobby. Same as the DX6, you can program up to 250 models on there and also use their SD card and program basically as many models as you want. I don't think I'm ever gonna have 250 models to program, but if you do, there you go. So I think that is it for this video. I got a couple other things coming your way, more on the surface side. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, or see you later.